everybody. I'm Dana Wilson from FODMAP Every Day. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just going to wait a few seconds, let people stream in. We're getting ready for our master class. We're here to show you all the practical ways to use FODZYME. We're going to have a QA and a at the end. We want all your questions to be answered. Um, this is a presentation, a co-presentation from FODZYME and FODMAP Every Day. Today we have with us Angie Liu, David Hatchwell. They're from FODZYME along with other members of their team, Jocelyn Wells, Jess Gallagher, Anastasia Filatova. I'll be here as well helping out. We have a dietitian on board, Jessica Rucraft. So uh, there she is, everybody's saying hi. We're going to show you all the practical applications to use FODZYME. I've got my hot soup ready coming up in a few moments. I'll explain what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna throw it over to Angie and David. Hello, lovely people from all over the world. And my name is Angie Liu, and I'm one of the co-founders of Peewee Biosciences, the biotech startup that invented FODZYME. Our mission is to serve and create solutions for this underserved community of people with gut disorders like IBS. My own journey with um, IBS started almost eight years ago. And along the way, I discovered, surprise, I have trouble with FODMAPs like many of you. And I started developing FODZYME with a team of scientists about three years ago to be able to comfortably eat my problem foods again. Because I wanted the best of both worlds, the freedom to indulge, but without consequences. And given how challenging and complex it can be to navigate gut issues and food intolerances, as many of you must know, our team focuses on simplicity and sustainability. Our first product, Fodzyme, as many of you might already know, is one such elegant solution. It's a blend of natural enzymes specifically designed to break down FODMAPs directly in a meal. Particularly, Fodzyme breaks down the following FODMAP groups, GOS, galacto-oligosaccharides, which is commonly in nuts and legumes like beans and lentils, lactose, which is found in varying levels across milk products, and this is for many of us, the worst nemesis, fructan. It's in loads of fruits and veggies and basically everywhere by virtue of being in garlic, onion, and wheat, which themselves are everywhere. We designed FODZYME as a versatile tool to enable you to reintroduce some of those foods that you've discovered to be troublesome. Not only so that you can build a more diverse diet for health, including microbiome benefits, but also so that you won't have to miss out on those special moments with loved ones where delicious high FODMAP foods just happen to be all around. I really want to stress the part about FODZYME being a tool to serve you but you have to use the tool. It's not like a pill to take every day and forget about. In fact, it's literally not a pill, but more on that in a little bit. FODZYME is a powerful tool and with any kind of tool, there is an art to using it optimally on the foods you want to eat and in the environment of your unique gut. So in today's masterclass, we're going really deep into the art of using FODZYME. As Data mentioned, our speakers will be walking you through practical exemplary scenarios of meals and snacks. There are different food groups, textures, consistencies, and we're going to talk about the nuances and share with you our pro tips. This is going to be the most extensive and in-depth session of FODZYME usage that we've ever done. So I hope you're excited. But before we dive in, I'd like to give a brief overview of how we design FODZYME and how exactly it works, because a firmer understanding of the product itself will help build effective intuition around the art of using it. So to start with, FODZYME is a powder blend that contains three key enzymes, lactase to break down lactose, alpha-galactosidase to break down GOS, and fructan hydrolase our novel superstar enzyme that, as we've shown experimentally, breaks down a whole spectrum of different kinds of fructans in food. Enzymes, first of all, are proteins. They get digested themselves in our bodies. So think of FODZYME as tiny edible scissors that are able to perform a specific function, namely snip down FODMAPs while they are active. There are a lot of factors that affect enzyme activity, 
obviously when they get eventually broken down into amino acids in your body, they are no longer active. Other major factors include temperature and pH. We're gonna get to temperature of your food later in the masterclass, but first I wanna discuss pH. Many of us have learned that the stomach is like a very acidic pouch and then food moves through that and into your small intestines, which is much less acidic. It's a little more nuanced than that. So while there's food in your stomach, immediately following the meal, the pH actually shoots up on average to be just slightly acidic and then decreases gradually to that highly acidic state that we usually think of as the stomach. That is actually perfect environment because a lot of enzymes that are sourced from microorganisms like bodzymes are optimally active at a slightly, uh, slight to moderate acidity. And hence, Fodzyme was designed with these constraints in mind. To make the most out of this window of time when your stomach is most favorable to enzyme activity, and to get that uh, Fodzyme reduction performed as quickly as possible before they are themselves digested throughout your gut. And this is why Fodzyme is a powder to sprinkle directly on food. It gives the enzymes a head start to homogenize with the meal and start working on the FODMAPs as soon as they touch the food. Remember, Fodzyme is meant to work on the food and not on your body. So think of it as a way to make what you eat low FODMAP by enzymatically targeting the FODMAPs within, but not changing anything in your body. So that's the Fodzyme basics. Let's go ahead with the masterclass and deep dive into specific examples. I will start with my lunch. It's a bowl of pasta. More specifically, it is trofie, a short twisted variety of pasta made of durum wheat. So a decent amount of fructans are lurking in there. I've also massaged a generous serving of pesto sauce into this dish, which is full of garlic and also a couple of dollops of ricotta to make it really rich. This is definitely a FODMAP packed meal with fructan and lactose. Because I can eat it all from this bowl, I'd recommend sprinkling a dose of um, FODZYME all over the meal. I like to tap at my little FODZYME scoop so as to help evenly distribute the powder And so it kind of looks like this now. And then I recommend mixing it in if you can. This way we can chew some enzyme into nearly every bite. And while this is not strictly necessary because our stomach will, after all, um, mix it all up, but it definitely doesn't hurt to give the enzymes a head start, especially in a meal that is so high in fructan. Speaking of meals that are particularly high in FODMAPs, I wanted to touch on dosing in just a bit. The right dose for you for a particular meal depends on how sensitive you are to that particular food and how much of it, how dense in FODMAPs that meal is, which obviously fluctuates from meal to meal. A standard dose of FODZYME was designed to be sufficient for most users and most typical meals. However, sometimes folks are more or less sensitive and need more or less FODZYME. It's perfectly fine to use a higher dose or a lower dose. Um, if you need a higher dose because you need an extra boost of enzymatic activity, again, that's um, no need to worry because the enzymes are just proteins themselves that get digested and they won't stay in your system. Similarly, if you suspect or know that a particular meal is very high in FODMAPs, you may want to increase your dosage to accommodate for the FODMAP intensity. In my case, I know that generally garlic and onion are among some of the ingredients most dense in fructan, and this dish is super garlicky. So I like to go ahead and sprinkle a second dose. Be careful though, because garlic taste, a strong garlic taste doesn't always correspond with the actual fructan content. That's because the flavor comes from compounds produced in garlic like allicin and not from the fructan itself. So some garlic powders are dehydrated via a high heat method. In fact, most garlic powders out there are done that way and they lose a lot of pungency. 
but they're still packed with fructan and they might be used more liberally in a food item. So take that into consideration when you read garlic powder or onion powder on an ingredients list. It may not taste as strong as meals cooked with say fresh garlic or freeze dried garlic or onion, but it could be even higher in fructan content. So now that I've applied fad lime on and into my fructan filled meal, I will pass it over to my co-founder, David, and I will dig in. Thank you, Angie. That was a brilliant introduction. I will carry on with a different example, one that I think is quite fitting as some of you are commenting on, on, on this specific use case. Um, so just introduce what I have in front of me. Um, this is a wrap. It's filled with beans, with uh, falafel, uh, with tomato and all sorts of sauces. So definitely high and, and cheese as well. So definitely high in all three FODMAPs that, that FODZYME targets. And again, those are the fructans, the galactoligosaccharides, the GOS group, um, as well as lactose. Um, and so what's particularly interesting about this, this use case is that it's not something you can mix FODZYME in. And I know that some of you uh, might be familiar with one of our recommendations, which is that when a food is, is, is something you cannot mix Fodzyme in, that you should put Fodzyme on, on a little corner and uh, chew it with the first bite. I, and I want to clarify this point um, for, for everyone because uh, I think that sometimes it, it, gets, um, it gets a little confusing. Um, as Angie said, Fodzyme, you can think of Fodzyme as millions of tiny um, scissors that need to access these FODMAPs and chop them up. And so um, the easiest way to make their job easier is to spread Fodzyme as evenly as possible over the entire meal. In fact, that would be the ideal case if you could do that. Um, so in cases where you cannot do that, um, obviously what we recommended is um, to you know, put it on a little corner and chew it. And as you're chewing it, you're really helping those tiny uh, Fodzyme enzymes really integrate into the food. Now, um, in this particular example I have with me uh, a different format for a time, which some of you might be familiar with, which are our single dose six packs. Uh, you can take this with you um, anywhere. And what I like to do in this case is instead of um, putting it in a little corner, uh, putting the entire dose in a little corner of the food, uh, which you, you could do, you could put a little bit there, take a bite, okay? Then wait a little bit. Excuse me. And then keep adding as you're eating the food a little bit of the dose. So you don't need to put the entire dose in, in, in one sitting. You can spread the dose as you're eating this. This would be the ideal scenario if you can do that. If you cannot, you can obviously just put it on the first bite. So again, just wanted to make really, really clear that the ideal case scenario is for FODZYME to be evenly spread across the entire meal. All right, and with that, I'll pass it on to the next presenter. Excellent. That crunch sounded delicious. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a little dry. No, it's, it's good. <laughs> no, it's like this is all about enjoying our food, right? So I decided that I wanted to make a lentil soup. Um, so that's what I have here legumes, beans, lentils, filled with galacto-oligosaccharides. I used garlic and onion, so there's fructans in here. Um, but let's talk about temperature, right? Because although there are cold soups, um, we often eat our soups hot. And the thing about Fodzyme is you can use it with cold and hot foods. When you're using it with a hot food, we want to make sure that it's not um, higher than 140 degrees, but you know, none of us are carrying around a thermometer. So basically, you just want to have the food at a, at a comfortable <laughs> temperature for you to eat, right? So if you're eating pizza, you know, sometimes like you burn the roof of your mouth, that's too hot. We just want to make it a comfortable temperature to eat, and then it's uh, good to go in terms of using the Fodzyme. So I bought this little, this little, this little pouch and I keep my little individual um, Fodzymes in there. And this has become like my thing, right? I'm going out to a friend's house, I'm going out to a restaurant or whatever, and I have this in my bag and I pull out one of my little 
individual, and this is what I like about this, portion controlled, so easy. And similar to what um, Angie was saying, I like to tap, and I'm gonna put this all over my soup. Now this is a, a soup with texture, so it, it wouldn't just dissolve into like a broth immediately and disperse. So I'm gonna sprinkle this all the way around and stir it in. And right before I came on camera, I made sure it wasn't too hot. I'm so excited, get to eat lentil soup. You know, and Angie also mentioned in the beginning the thing about us being able to get back to enjoying meals with friends and family. Lentil soup is one of those things that my parents always made. I grew up on it. So for me, this is a comfort food. And so being able to have this again is, you know, not only physically satisfying because I get to eat, eat this, but there's a real emotional satisfaction as well. So I'm gonna dig in and who's up next? I'm gonna throw it over to Anastasia. Hi everyone. And Dede, that looks absolutely yummy. I'm so glad that you can um, enjoy it. And um, yeah, so actually I would like to continue a little bit on the point of liquids. Um, so I've got another scenario here, which um, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to and that's juices and smoothies. And I have a smoothie here, which I pre-made myself. Um, so as Zinni mentioned, um, and Angie mentioned before, uh, we don't uh, recommend using Fodzine with um, water, uh, but it's best to add uh, the powder directly to the food or beverage that's high in FODMAPs. So what we mean here is um, the closer the Fodzine and enzymes are to the FODMAP molecules, the better, right? So um, what happens when you drink it with, um, with a glass of water? Because um, some of our customers uh, ask uh, sometimes that um, whether, whether they can just add it to a glass of water with their meal and drink it as they are eating. So what happens in that scenario is you're physically separating uh, enzymes from um, FODMAPs they're meant to break down. And well, of course, we don't want to do that. We want them to be as close to each other as possible so they can interact, integrate, and do their own a little magic. So um, what, uh, what I have here is a green smoothie. Um, it's not uh, got like only uh, high FODMAP uh, ingredients, but it has banana, it has a yogurt base, um, and it has quite a lot of spinach, hence the color. Um, so that's all high in uh, fructan and lactose, of course. Um, and what we're gonna do is uh, use this little magic powder, as I'm sure you're um, familiar with, um, and uh, add this to direct it to the glass. Um, and of course, because it's a liquid, uh, it's uh, fairly easy to mix it in. Uh, I'm just going to stir it in with a spoon here um, and just let it um, let it work its magic. Um, so but there are a few uh, or a couple uh, ways we can actually do it with a juice or a smoothie. So um, if you make it yourself and sorry, one second, it's good. Um, if you make it yourself at home, um, you can actually add a Fodzine directly to the blender with your ingredients. And of course, the blender will do the mixing for you and do a wonderful job with it. Um, in here, in this case, I uh, pre-made uh, or pre-done the blending uh, before the session because I didn't want to make too much noise. Uh, so I added it directly to the glass. And if you buy it in a shop or um, any kind of smoothie, cafe, or anything like that, you can, of course, add it directly to the bottle or the glass and shake it all up and, of course, mix it in if you if you have something to mix it in with. Um, yeah, so now it's uh, mixed in and um, work it, working itself um, on the on the FODMAPs. I just wanted to mention another thing, that if you pre-make a batch and actually you add uh, FODMAPs to, um, to the mixer, to the blender, uh, and you want to keep it in the fridge for later, that's absolutely fine. So uh, once uh, FODMAPs is actually mixed in with, uh, with FODMAPs and starts to activate, um, there's um, no, no reversing of that process. So uh, it's absolutely fine to keep it in the fridge. Of course, dosing wise, as um, both uh, Angie and David uh, mentioned, it's very individual, but um, I would say for the amount of 
spinach and banana and yogurt. I used um, one dose was um, sufficient, but of course, very individual. Um, so now, yeah, now it's all mixed in. I'm here to enjoy. And um, I think uh, we're back to Angie from here. Cheers. Hi, everyone again. I just went to grab a snack and I have with me some frozen chocolate covered banana slices. I know there's some lactose in the chocolate and the bananas I know are very ripe. So with a moderate amount of fructan in them, and because I'm only planning on having a few pieces, maybe I don't need a full dose of Fadzan. Also, it's just banana and chocolate. It's not like three pieces of roasted garlic. So I think I'll be able to eyeball a quarter or half, um, uh, half of a regular dose of Fadzan. And of course, you can be more precise with the scoop. But I like to think that after um, using Fadzan for quite a while, I have a sense of how much powder is um, a quarter or a half. This time, I'll demonstrate another way to take Fadzheim with the first bite, which we actually learned from our very own Fadzheim users. Um, and, and frankly, it was kind of <laughs> mind-blowing when we first heard about it. And it's very simple. You put the powder in your mouth first and then chew the first bite together with the enzyme. This method is great, especially when you're concerned about possibly spilling and wasting the product on a small piece of food. And speaking of small portions of food, I'll now hand it over to Just to talk about small plate eating and eating at parties. Hi everyone. It's so it's so nice to see all of you. So something that we get asked fairly often, once you've tried Fodzyme for a while, once you've been using it fairly consistency is like, is how do I use it when I'm eating lots of small bites of food um, that are all a little bit different. Maybe they have different triggers, um, different sizes, different shapes, things like that. So for example, people wanna know how to use um, Fodzheim when they eat appetizers at a wedding or they go to a restaurant and they wanna do um, like an appetizer entree dessert or tapas or dim sum or um, they go to a buffet, it's really exciting. So one way to do it um, is, so I, I bought a lot of food. I bought a bunch of takeout and so I have veggie dumplings that have broccoli and um, and cabbage. I have um, spring rolls that have cabbage and carrots. I got um, chicken with zucchini and just and some plain rice, but like lots of different things. Um, and I want to eat it all and I want to eat it at different times. So since I'm at home, I have a, a, a home kit. But what I would do is I would concentrate a little bit of Fodzheim on the thing that you want to eat first. And then I'd probably stick a little bit more on the thing you want to eat second and third and, and really just kind of spread it out. So one, I make sure I get it on the first bite, but it's also kind of all throughout the meal. And then, you know, I might mix it together and it doesn't really have too much of a taste, especially when it's like kind of savory. And um, <clears throat> another thing is if you are eating a food that doesn't contain FODMAPs, I get this question fairly often, like, for example, this plain white rice. You know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't necessarily concentrate my fodzyme on on that. It's I'd place it on the places or that I think or I know contain high fodmap foods. So I would spread it out like this, and then if I was enjoying myself, I was at a restaurant or I was just taking a while, maybe thirty minutes or more, I might dose up a little bit, especially when I know I'm stacking. A, a decent amount of triggers and things like that. I might apply a second dose. You know, if you take a, a while to eat and you're enjoying yourself, it's perfectly fine to dose up to make sure you have enough. So I'm gonna start with my veggie dumpling and I will pass it along to Jocelyn. Great, thank you for that. Uh, so hi everyone, I'm very excited um, to share on two other commonly asked questions that we get. And the first, which Anastasia kind of touched on is, you know, can I mix my Fodzyme in water or even coffee, which, you know, I'm already seeing some questions in the chat about. And I, I really hear you on how convenient this might sound, but mixing Fodzyme in water actually limits the enzyme's ability to break down the FODMAPs in our food. So a helpful way to think about this question is to return to that analogy of enzymes 
acting as molecular scissors that break down the FODMAPs into smaller, more easily digestible carbohydrates. So remember, the digestive enzymes are specialized proteins that act on food, not on the body. So for the enzymes to really work their magic, they need to come into contact with that food as much as possible. So this is why we recommend mixing FODZYME into our foods directly or sprinkling that full dose on your first bite. Because if we mix the enzymes with water rather than consume them with our food, the enzymes have less contact with the FODMAPs and then can't break them down as well. So another way to think about it is kind of like how unlike with a vitamin supplement where the aim is really for the vitamins to actually be absorbed, the digestive enzymes are just acting on the food while both of them are in our digestive tract. So the digestive enzymes themselves are never actually entering our body. After they break down those FODMAPs, their work is essentially done. So this means we really need to make sure that they can mix with the FODMAP containing foods as much as possible. So this topic also brings me to a next question that we often hear. And again, I'm already seeing some questions about in our chat. And that question is, what happens if I use FODZYME on polyols? So just as a quick reminder and you know, little refresh, you know, polyols are that P of the, the FODMAPs. And there are two main types of polyols that occur naturally in foods, so sorbitol and mannitol. And both of these are really sugar alcohols, and they're found in a range of fruits and vegetables, often stone fruits and mushrooms. Um, and then polyols are also often added to commercial kind of low sugar products like gums, like mints. Um, and on labels, you'll often see them in the form of xylitol, maltolol, or isomalt uh, on the back of a product. And so FODZYME, as we all know, doesn't yet break down polyols, though you know, we're working tirelessly to develop that formula that will. Um, so in the meantime, what we say is eating FODZYME with polyol-containing foods is truly harmless. Um, and when I, when I say harmless, like what does that mean? So it means that FODZYME's enzymes will again essentially pass through our digestive tract and be metabolized and then excreted, just like any other protein would be. Because remember, at the end of the day, the enzymes are just kind of specialized proteins. So while FODZYME is not actually gonna break down the polyols in a meal or snack, there's no reason to be scared of kind of any negative impact that they would have. If the enzymes have nothing to act on, they're really just excreted. So if you're the rare person with only a polyol sensitivity, FODZYME will really not be able to help. But, and unfortunately, we know that, you know, most of you are sensitive to other FODMAPs like the fructans, the GOS, and the lactose, all of which, as we discussed, you know, FODZYME can help address. Um, so what this really means is that, you know, using FODZYME with a food that contains multiple types of uh, FODMAPs can help reduce that overall FODMAP load and help keep symptoms un under control, even though it's not targeting the polyols directly. So I hope that ha that helps kind of make sense of, you know, why we're so adamant about adding uh, FODZYME to the food itself directly and, you know, explain how FODZYME can, you know, help reduce FODMAPs overall, even when it's not targeting the polyols directly. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our next speaker, Sue Cooper, um, who will share her personal experience using FODZYME. Hello, my name is Sue Cooper. Um, I work in West London um, as a community artist with a group of puppets known as the Elders. So some of them are joining me at the tea table today. Um, FODZYME for me has been an absolute miracle. Um, I've been using it since the 11th of January, which is a nice little date on my calendar now. And when I wrote to these wonderful teams to say thank you, they said, would you like to come along and talk about it? So here I am. Here we are. Um, I say miracle um, because for me, for the first time in seven years, I have a completely quiet gut and I eat anything I want. And there, you know, in the IBS community, there aren't miracles any bigger than that, I don't suppose. Um, sort of medically, you know, seven years, 
all of the tests, diagnosis of IBS. And I always think that's an interesting term because, you know, if you're struggling with it, it's not really irritation. It's kind of anger or tantrum or kind of rage that happens in your gut. So all of the symptoms, the daily diarrhea, the, the stomach cramps, the just sort of generally a lot of noise going on in the plumbing most of the time. Last year, I met a new gastroenterologist who's started to break down some of my problems a bit differently. So under this umbrella of IBS, started to talk about things like colonic insufficiently, insufficiency, sec secondary gastroparesis, SIBO, etc. And with a program of supplements and a low FODMAP, uh, low FODMAP diet, things were better, but they weren't right. And I still had some kind of nasty surprises. And eating felt like playing Russian roulette, really. You're never quite sure, particularly eating out, eating at friends. You're either kind of nightmare guest who interrogates the host as to everything that's in the food, um, or you take a chance and suffer consequences. Anyway, over the winter this year, sort of between Thanksgiving and New Year's, I had four really bad attacks. I mean, some of which had me in bed for a day, you know, clutching the hot water bottle, looking for stronger painkillers, that sort of stuff. Um, but that enforced idleness gave me enough time to kind of think about what the trigger foods might have been. And as I did that, I realized it was the sort of stuff that Fodzheim claimed they could help. And I say claimed because if you struggle with IBS, you're not short of people kind of suggesting supplements, some of which are very expensive, most of which in my experience didn't work. But anyway, I felt I'd tried everything else. I might as well give it a go. So I ordered some Fodzheim and then sat and looked at this pot for a week and sort of dared myself to try. Um, and in the end, kind of cleared my calendar and had a go. And I had a go by eating a sandwich with half an onion. And when I say half an onion, I mean a half a kind of British onion, not half of one of the giant American onions. Um, ate my sandwich, sprinkled with Fodzyme, and sat to see what had happened. And after half an hour, which was my normal signal that there was trouble, nothing happened. And after an hour, an hour and a half, to bedtime to the next morning, no reaction at all. But being kind of pretty skeptical sort of person, I thought I need better proof. So two days later, I made some homemade hummus with a shed load of garlic and ate it with a normal wheat pitted bread and thought, if this product claims it can do this, you know, let's see what it does now. And the same thing happened. That is to say, absolutely nothing. So I became convinced that the sort of digestive issues I was having, you know, were things that Fodzheim could deal with. Since then, I have to say, I've been on some sort of victory lap. I mean, I spend my life now sort of eating pizza and pasta and lentils and all of the things that I wasn't able to have and lots of onion and garlic. So that is, that's my story. That's what happened to me. And, you know, being in London, it being tea time, um, I'll show you how I use it on a slice of cake. Um, by the way, incidentally, I carry my, like Day Day, I have a little bag to carry my jar around in. I have a little pot that I have on my dining table and I just scoop some out when I need it. And I have a little box. I used to carry the sachets in my bag or fanny pack bum bag, um, but they got a bit creased. So I now have a, a little box to put them in. Anyway, so believing that you have to put this stuff as close to the source as possible, and I've got a simple thing to demonstrate. I mean, all I do is take a piece of cake, throw this on top, and off I go. 
So as I sit down to enjoy my fructans and lactose snack, I'll hand over to Jess. I think it's me, Jess, right? <laughs> Yeah. Pardon, there's two of us. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Jessica Rucroft. I'm a registered dietitian from Vancouver, Canada, and I also developed IBS seemingly overnight. There was a bit of a traumatic incident in my family, and it seemed that overnight this seemingly healthy registered dietitian just seemed to stop being able to digest and um, developed good old IBSD. So now it's my passion. Um, to help others going through the same thing. And I'm so grateful for uh, the developers of Fodzyme because since 2021, my practice has completely changed because of this amazing tool that I can uh, teach clients about. Um, so in saying that, I'm going to chat to you about how to try your known trigger foods after avoidance. I understand wholeheartedly that this can be a super scary experience. I have clients that have avoided certain foods for 10, 15, 20, 25 years, and it can seem scary to suggest, like Sue mentioned, to try said food that you have normally been bitten a bum bum by in the past. So first of all, um, number one piece of advice before we dive into, I'm gonna give you some very practical tips. First piece of advice, work with a registered dietitian who is trained in IBS and the low FODMAP diet. Um, you just You can easily find us. Um, a lot of us are in the Monash app. Um, but work with a registered dietitian because there are three phases to the low FODMAP diet and we don't want to keep you overly restricted forever. Um, there is phase one where we reduce FODMAPs. This is the elimination phase and it should be temporary. Um, you work with a dietitian to find out your triggers during phase two and et cetera. But when you know your known triggers, um, and if they are in the um, milieu of <laughs> FODSYME, that can help. Um, and if you want to know what exactly, which foods FODSYME can help with, side note, go to uh, FODSYME.com, head to the how to use tab, Print off the list, I tell this to clients all the time, print off the list of foods that Fodzyme works with, and then print off the list that says foods enriched in polyols currently not compatible with Fodzyme. And then you know, you have a good eyeball of the things that you might have been avoiding in the past that you may um, be fine with, with a little tool called Fodzyme. Um, so to do this, I have sort of two methods. One is quick and dirty. That's what I did. I went to the ballpark. I said, okay, let's do this. Put on Fodzyme on a regular hot dog. That always, always gives me tummy aches, no matter what. <laughs> Ever since I was even younger, before my flare up, you know, huge days of IBSD, I always seemed to have trouble with hot dogs and regular buns. Tried that with my four-year-old at the water park and I was fine. It was amazing. So that's quick and dirty. Now, if you have a lot of fear, this can be really scary. Trying something with onion powder, or garlic powder, where you know these are your triggers. Even though you see that Fodzyme can help with this because it's listed in their foods that it can help with, um, you might be scared. So I'll give you some practical tools now as to how to make a plate of food that just has one small dose of one of your biggest fear foods on it so that you can be convinced as to um, <laughs> how awesome Fodzyme is, but also just to gain confidence back that you can do this, you can reintroduce foods um, that this um, lovely enzymatic formula can digest for you. So um, my favorite plates to put together for our good old chicken, carrots, potatoes, just salt and pepper seasoned, or salmon, rice, three quarter cup broccoli heads. So if you go into... Um, the Monash app, you'll see amber light serving. So these are servings that may or may not cause an issue. So you're already knowing that you're gonna bring back a fear food. Let's say it's garlic. Let's say in an amber light serve, it's a quarter of a clove. This is what we do to help clients challenge foods. It's small and steady, but we're not really challenging foods. We're just demonstrating the usefulness of this tool, Fodzyme. So get one of those plates that are balanced. They're kind of moderate in fiber, chicken, carrots and potatoes. You put, say, that quarter clove, that amber light serving of garlic, if you're really kind of hesitant, 
put it on, spread it on your chicken, or you can uh, mash it up into a little ramekin and put it on your chicken and roast it with your chicken or what have you. Then you do your usual sprinkle on the, red, the recommended dose of Fodzyme and then eat it. And then that is a way that you know that you're getting a small bit at a time. You have an enzyme that can cover it. Your plate does not contain any other FODMAPs that FODZYME is not compliant with. So what we don't wanna do is have this plate of food and then have an apple for dessert, which contains these polyols and that's located on the list of foods that FODZYME is not compatible with. So just keep it simple, keep that plate of food. I love the chicken, potatoes and carrots <laughs> plate of food with your cortical of garlic and then sit and wait. So let's touch on timing now of what we should be looking for. So typically the reaction time for something that's FODMAP related is about two to eight hours. So it sometimes we have folks who need to shoot right to the bathroom after eating something and um, they feel that this is FODMAP related. Um, most likely it is not. The, the reactions that happen earlier than two hours or earlier than 90 minutes even tend to be of um, more of a signal that your body is sending from your upper GI tract to your lower GI tract saying, hey, food's coming, clear out some food. It's called your gastrocolic reflex. So normally if you have a super speedy quick reaction, it could be that, it could be histamine intolerance. There's so many other things. Again, work with a dietitian, but if it's a FODMAP issue, you will know between two and eight hours, usually depending on the type of food you eat, if it's liquid, if it's solid, uh, did you take it on an empty stomach, size of the meal, etc. But the main point is, <laughs> like Sue said, if you wait a couple hours later, you feel fine, you feel fine, then you know that Fodzyme, like they say, because it does work, is working. And then you can get more confident and put on a half a clove of garlic, then a whole clove of garlic until you can convince yourself that this is something you can totally do. Um, another big trigger food, like Sue said, is onion. So if you want to try an amber light serving of onion with your Fodzyme on it, but you don't want, you're not ready for a full plate of onion rings, for example, try your regular low FODMAP gluten-free burger on a bun with just plain potato fries and then one onion ring and then put your Fodzyme on it and then help yourself slowly just be comfortable and confident in using this amazing tool. Um, Another big trigger food that people, I've seen the chat here, the, um, <laughs> the beans, that's a big one for me too. Um, so start again slow. That amber light serving of say black beans is about a quarter of a cup. You can mix that into your otherwise low FODMAP grain like rice or quinoa. My other favorite trigger, um, low FODMAP plate to challenge foods with is salmon, rice, and again, three quarter cup of broccoli heads. So you can mix up that quarter cup black beans and that rice. Sprinkle on your Fodzyme and then wait that amount of time and just sit back and relax because it's going to be fine. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. But um, I think this is over to the Q&A portion of our event, right? Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, so we're going to get started on our Q&A section right now. We've gotten a lot of really awesome questions from our uh, community in the questions tab. And I just want to mention one, one quick thing before um, we start over with Q&A. If you have questions in the future, if you have things that you'd individually like to talk about, um, we are always available to chat. Um, if you, you know, anybody who's interested in, in talking about Fodzheim, if you email us, call us, text us. We're, we're a pretty available team. Um, and we, yeah, we, we'd love to be able to help. So if we hopefully can get to a bunch of questions now, but if not, um, we'll pop the email in the chat and we'll start with our first question, which I think should probably go to the Fodzyme team. Um, does Fodzyme cover animal fat uh, digestion? Anyone from our team want to take it? Happy to take it. Um, all right, so the question is whether Fodzyme can work on fat, on lipids. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, Fodzyme has, as we've mentioned, three enzymes that target very specifically um, three fibers, uh, three FODMAP fibers. The FODMAPs are, are fibers uh, for the most part. Um, and when we talk about fats, we typically talk about the lipids and, and there are enzymes that are our bodies produce for, for, for fats. Um, and um, some people might have um, 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 
a suboptimal production of, of, of those enzymes or not producing enough of those um, so-called lipases. Um, and um, some clinicians and providers might recommend uh, supplementing with lipase um, enzyme supplements, uh, but that's not what, uh, what Fodzyme does, just to be clear. Excellent. How about um, how to use Fodzyme on chips? Maybe Angie? I can take a stab at that if anyone else has other thoughts, because it's there's many ways you can slice this. And also there are many ways you can slice chips. So chips can come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. And depending on which side of the Atlantic you are from, if you are um, an Anglophone, for example, you might think of chips as fries or as these little crispy things from a bag. So um, again, this kind of goes back to that art of using Podzyme. It is a versatile product. Um, we've shown different ways that you can use it on different types of foods. So I can just maybe off the top of my head, um, give you a couple of examples um, and, and how I would kind of imagine using Fodzyme in, in different scenarios. So let's say if there's like a tortilla chip that you, know, you might dip in a salsa, or if it's like the British chips that's known in the US as fries, um, um, and you have a dip, say ketchup or mayonnaise, um, you can put um, the you can put Fodzyme directly into the dip. In the case of salsa, that would actually be quite um, um, relevant as there might be some onions and, and garlic lurking in there, similarly for ketchup. And then this way, if you're dipping through it, you're gonna get enzyme into it, um, the, the, the chips um, into every bite. If you're just having, let's say something like popcorn or like I don't know, veggie straws or Doritos, um, Something you can do is that first bite method, um, the one that I demonstrated, for instance, take some Fodzyme, chew it with that first bite, and that really helps incorporate the enzymes into a piece of food that later continues to incorporate into the rest of the food, food mush as it gets into your stomach. Another thing you could do if the, the chips are kind of maybe a little more like um, sticky, as in like think of Doritos that already have the seasonings on them, you can just sprinkle it all over and it, it also might stick. So there's um, many ways to to kind of go about this. These are the first thoughts that, that come to mind and um, you know, enjoy. Awesome, thanks Angie. Um, this next one might be for one of our wonderful registered dietitians. This person is asking, can I eat yogurt any time of day? Um, I'm having trouble moving on from soluble foods. Anyone want to take a stab at that one? Uh, can you repeat the question? I think I'm just not clear. You mean yeah. solid foods? It's soluble. Jessica, when I read it, I think that's what the person means. Okay. She says, I'm having trouble moving on from soluble foods. I think maybe she means moving to solid. Okay. And can have yogurt any time of the day. Um, I mean, if we're talking um, lactose free yogurt versus regular yogurt, I mean, it really depends on where you are at in you knowing your triggers. So for example, if we are not yet clear as to if lactose is a trigger for you, I would work with a registered dietitian to help design a way to test this out. There's also hydrogen breath tests that help um, determine lactose intolerance. If you are eating a lactose-free dairy product and you still find some symptoms are happening, there's also the possibility that you would be, you might be intolerant to a certain type of beta casein called A1 beta casein. Um, and that again can be worked through with a registered dietitian. If um, solid food in general is scary and it's nothing to do with lactose or beta caseins, um, there might be some sort of upper GI issue going on. I mean, I'm not quite sure what your health picture is, but again, working with, uh, you know, your gastroenterologist, a registered dietitian will definitely help sort out all of these items. I know it can be scary. Some people are, are, are even reduced to an elemental diet um, when they're going through a lot of um, really harsh uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. Um, so my heart goes out to everyone who's ever had to do that. Um, 
So if that's the transition you're talking about, again, working with a registered dietitian to help pick some safe foods for you to start with, because not every person out there with gastrointestinal issues has IBS. You know, for example, I can't eat applesauce, but maybe applesauce works as a nice, gentle um, food for you. But we're all different in our triggers, and it's really good to just work with an RD to help sort through all these little nuances. I hope that helps. Let me know if there's any other things in there that um, I've missed for you or if I didn't answer your question correctly. Awesome. Thank you. The next one is... How is Fodzyme different than a digestive enzyme that breaks down many different foods? Happy to take that. Um, and anyone else feel free to jump in. Um, I think that, again, one, one key um, uh, concept to, to really understand is that enzymes are not one size fits all. They're really, really specific to what they do. There's enzymes that break things apart. There's enzymes that stick things together. It's enzymes for, for many, many different applications. Uh, every living cell produces enzymes for many different functions. Digestive enzymes are just a subcategory of that. Uh, and within digestive enzymes, um, there's even a very large uh, series of categories within it for different types of target molecules So we have. Um, uh, things like lipases for fats we're discussing. We have things in FODzyme. We have enzymes in FODzyme that uh, specifically target three different FODMAP groups. And as we say, we have an enzyme for each specific FODMAP. Um, so again, there is a, a very uh, unique relationship between an enzyme and what the enzyme can do. Um, so when we talk about um, um, digestive enzymes, it really means a wide variety of things. Uh, perhaps the most common things that we're all used to and exposed to when we go, for instance, to a supermarket or, or to a health store is um, so-called pancreatic enzymes. So enzymes that our, our body produces, things like lipases, amylases, uh, even our saliva, we have amylases. Um, and, um, and, and, and those are really, uh, or proteases as well, uh, for proteins, uh, amylases for starches, lipases for fats. Um, and those are things that our, those are enzymes that our bodies produce um, endogenously. Um, and that's really what helps us uh, retransform the raw food that comes in to our bodies into um, things that we can actually metabolize and turn into nutrients. Um, when we're talking about FODMAPs, however, um, um, all FODMAPs with, with the exception of, of, of lactose uh, don't have an enzyme that our body produces to break them down. They're um, known as fibers. That's they're fibers because they go through our bodies undigested, um, uh, with the exception that our gut bacteria digests them, and that's how they they cause trouble. Um, and so, when when comparing Fodzyme to, in general, digestive enzymes, we have to understand that you know when we want to target FODMAPs specifically, we need a specific set of of tools of enzymes to target them. And that's what you find in Fonzen. Hopefully that clarifies things and anyone else feel free to pitch in. Okay, awesome. Thanks, David. Um, the next one is um, from Mick saying, I'm due to go to Spain next month, but dreading being restricted to enjoy what I want to eat. Um, and yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. Um, well, safe travels. That's exciting. And, um, and maybe maybe someone from the team can talk about um, a little bit of travel tips. Any, any of the best travel tips for, for eating out and feeling comfortable? I volunteer. I feel... <laughs> <laughs> also, could I just... Could I ask you to also mention where it's available right now? Because we... I don't know where this person is already, we get mm. lots of questions about availability around the world. That's a great point, Dede. Uh, perhaps let's start with that. And, and yeah, so if you're, if you're trying to get your hands into, on, onto Fodzine, um, you can find it online uh, throughout many geographies. We ship from the US, so if you're in the US, um, that is the easiest way is to go to our website, fodzine.com. Um, if you are in places like Canada, um, UK, Europe, um, and um, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, you can find it both online, so we can ship from the US to those locations, as well as uh, go to one of the retailers that we work with in those geographies. We have 
several retailers across um, UK, um, EU, the EU space, um, as well as Australia and New Zealand. Um, and you can find those um, in on our website. Uh, Jess, I don't know if you can uh, drop a link to to that for for those who are interested on on the list of our uh, retailers. Um, but yeah, and if you happen to be in other places in the world, um, please let us know. Um, and sometimes we can figure out ways to get full time to you. We've done it from the beginning. Um, on the question of Spain, I'm particularly close to that because I happen to be from Spain. Um, and it's quite relevant actually to the use case I was trying to demonstrate earlier on my now very cold uh, hot wrap or cold wrap, I guess, at this point. Um, and, and, you know, if you're going to Spain, well, I'm hoping that you will be able to enjoy a lot of foods in particular tapas, uh, which is a lot of different, you know, small portions of different foods, all of which are definitely very high in, in FODMAPs, in particular garlic and onion. Those are, those are big staples in, in Spanish cuisine. And so what I would definitely recommend in those cases, just as we we're demonstrating all of us a little bit earlier, is um, taking your, um, ideally, uh, the Fogzine stick packs, the single dose stick packs, and really putting a little bit of the powder on each of those tapas, trying to really evenly spread it um, across the board. Um, and that, that's really the best thing. If you happen to have really a lot of tapas, then uh, consider, depending obviously on your sensitivities, um, increasing the dosage, maybe using instead of one, two stick packs, or maybe two scoops of Fogzine if you're happen to, to take the jar with you, um, but that would be the best tip. Again, the really important intuition here is that the enzymes need to be as evenly spread out across the food as possible, and that will help them do their job much, much better. Excellent. Well, we just want to thank everyone for coming. And, you know, I, I think I speak for all of us at Fodzyme and uh, Robin and I at FODMAP every day. We love doing these events together. We think this was really successful. We're getting lots of thumbs up and heart shaped emojis. So, you know, maybe we'll do another one. Let us know what you guys are interested in. Um, we know the low FODMAP diet is hard. Uh, FODMAP every day and FODZYME are here for you. We want all of you to be able to enjoy your food and with, you know, minimize your digestive symptoms. And we will keep working as hard as we can to help all of you get to that place of healing. So thank you very much today. Look for the uh, replay. We will be sending it out as soon as possible. Thank you again for coming. <laughs>